Welcome to the City Current Show, powered by Hagen Botham Insurance and Financial Services. This show focuses on sharing good news and powering the good in our community. Now here's your host, Andrew Bartolotta. Welcome back to the City Current Show, where we bring you inspiring stories of individuals and organizations making an impact and powering the good in our community and around the globe. I'm your host, Andrew Bartolotta, and today we're excited to have Marcin Malasco and Amit Singh, co-founders of Mission Cocktails. And Mission Cocktails is not just about creating premium, ready-to-pour craft cocktails, which we all love. It's also about making a difference. And with every bottle, Mission Cocktails donates to local food banks, providing thousands of meals to families in need. So let's get into it and learn more about these ready-to-pour cocktails and the purpose and passion behind them. Marcin and Ahmet, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, thanks, Andrew, for having us. Super grateful and honored to be here. Thanks a lot, Andrew. We're so excited. What inspired you both to co-found Mission Cocktails? We always say it's a uh, it was a product and marketplace of necessity for us. Um, and probably a lot of your listeners will relate, but you know, when COVID hit, we like to say, we kind of, we don't like to say, actually, we don't like to admit it, but I guess our business is built on it, but you know, like everyone else, we turned into somewhat closet to at home alcoholics during COVID. And we probably drank a lot more than we should have. Um, and we really started, uh, experimenting with, uh, craft cocktails, you know, by making them truthfully, we're, we're all used to the restaurant scene. Uh, and that was a miserable, messy, costly experiment that our wives hated in the kitchen. So we went out and, and bought a bunch and uh, then bought a lot more and, and tried a lot of different craft cocktails and realized the one thing that was kind of missing for us is none of them really truly tasted like they did coming out of a, a barman's shaker, right? So they didn't have that fresh real ingredient kind of authentic spirit kind of taste that you'd get right out of a shaker. So, you know, after, after months of trial, um, me and Marcin like to say that, um, we, uh, we had 50% bravado, uh, getting into the business, 50% naivety and, um, you know, 50%, uh, a little bit of, you know, drunkenness. So we're at 150% when we made the decision to get into this business. Um, and, and in all honesty, the next morning, we kind of did shake it off and looked at each other and said, you know what, we should do this, right? If there's two guys like us who find a hole in the market, then um, there's got to be a lot more of a, a people like us. And that's what set us upon really a two and a half year journey of how to commercialize that, that barman shaker recipe into these 5,000 gallon vats and we wish it took us three months, but the process is proprietary us to, to us and took a long time, uh, but we were happy where, with where we ended up. Yeah, and I think the the biggest thing is when we looked at each other is, you know, be, before the business, we were best friends or families vacation together. You know, we met at a charity event and then a week later, we realized we lived a block away from each other. So all of our evening walks turned into a cocktail walk. Our dog walks had cocktails. You know, my, my wife was pregnant. She wasn't big of a drinker, but even my first son came, we were doing cocktail walks with uh, us making the drinks. And again, it was just a bad experience and we were never really satisfied with the drinks that we made. But then we said, you know, why are we going to get into the alcohol business that me and Ahmet both have zero experience in? Um, and looking at it, it's run by, you know, big conglomerates that own their industry. It's like, why are we going to get into this difficult money losing business. And I just had a, you know, a newborn and, you know, we, we, we always like to say we moderately were successful in, in our previous lives. And we said, why are we doing this? And we said, why don't we create a perpetual giving machine is to really like, why, what's going to drive us. Um, and then we first said, you know, 1% and like, no, everyone just gives that 1% to just give. We said 2% like, no. And then it was that moment me and I both looked at each other. We're like, Five percent, and at first it was just like, "Whoa, okay, five percent committing of revenues, you know, self-funding, bootstrapping the business." We looked at each other we're like, "Could we make the business work at a certain point of its life cycle where we could run a sustainable and profitable business and make a huge impact?" So we said, "Yeah," uh, and we figured out we could make it work. And since our launch in April 2023. We have provided 33,586 meals to families in need through a 5% cash donation. 
And by the end of the year, we're on pace to provide them over 100,000 meals. So that to us, as a tiny little company that just started a year ago without any experience, we feel really proud because we're making a real impact. And our ultimate goal is really getting to that million mark of providing meals. And then of course, beyond that, but we don't even measure our business truthfully, uh, Andrew, by sales or bottles. We look at how many meals are we providing for that year or that quarter, which has been really amazing because it's uh, really driven us past all the challenges and roadblocks. Well, it's really cool to see how a friendship has evolved into a partnership, which is involved into giving back and feeding hungry families across your region and soon, you know, around the nation and globally and everything that you're able to do because social impact is mandatory nowadays. And so you wear shoes that give back and then you have shirts and you your purchasing decisions should be based on those companies that are not just feeding their bottom line, but also giving back to those around them. And so for you all to come into a very saturated, big conglomerate filled market and say, we're here to make a difference. That's bold and big. And you had to be drunk to make that decision. (laughs) But also, also kudos to y'all to say, we're going to make a difference and we're going to beat the odds. And here you are very new to this part, this, this product, but it's already making a huge difference uh, and the ingredients and the 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 crafted cocktails you have sound incredible. So dive a little bit deeper into, of course, your name, Mission Cocktails, reflects your brand's philosophy. Go into the product line that you have with, with these ready-to-pour crafted cocktails. Yeah, I, I think going back to just our give back, we really looked at, you know, me and Ahmed are both not from Southern California. We both transplant here. Ahmed here was about 14 years ago. I came here a little over 10 years ago. So we figured out, hey, there's such amazing resources that we can use for our cocktails. So another commitment we made is every ingredient that we get uh, that's created into our cocktails is locally sourced within 100 miles where we bottle in Southern California, except of course the spirits, right? They come from their authentic places like our our agave blanco comes from Jalisco, Mexico, our rum comes from West Indies, our you know, rye may come from Tennessee. So really coming from the authentic geography. But one other thing about Mission Craft Cocktails is it's classic cocktails with a little mission twist, right? For our, our own twist. So to give you an idea, our cosmopolitan, which is a fantastic drink, we infuse the vodka with cucumbers and grapefruit. We make our own orange liqueur. We use real cranberry juice. There's a hint of rosemary rosemary and peppercorn to give that sweet, savory finish. So again, classic cocktail for the consumer to read. But then once they try it, it's like, whoa, this has like a little bit something unique that, you know, is a little bit beyond the, the regular cocktail. Yeah. And just to add on to that one too, the Every one of our twists or every one of our drinks has a very unique kind of California ingredient as well. So we specifically uh, on the produce side play to the California orange. Um, so for our margarita, uh, it's a you know classic uh, 100% agave tequila we use, but real lime juice. So the, the juice of six limes in every bottle, where surprisingly 99% of other margarita makers in the world can't actually claim that. It seems really odd that you can't claim that there's actual limes in your margarita, but sadly, that is a truth that we face. And and part of the reason a lot of these bottles don't taste like they taste uh, out of a barman shaker is it's water and flavor where we use actual lime juice. So big, big difference. Uh, but then we take California oranges, create a orange liqueur with that California orange to make ours a Cadillac. So every one of our drinks has got a, a unique California twist to it. And as Marson mentioned, all real juices, which surprisingly um, is very unique in the uh, in the craft cocktail space at retail. I love it because you have these high quality ingredients, you have localized sustainability and this hundred mile radius. You bring in these really unique flavors and the branding is on point as well. And so then to top that all off, you're giving back. So how has the feedback from the community and your customers influence 
the growth and development of Mission Cocktails. So, you know, I think you mentioned earlier, Andrew, that um, our give back has been very localized to California. And I did want to say one thing, right? We we are only distributed in stores in California right now. We are we are sold on our website at, uh, at missioncocktails.com. But as we grow our geographical footprint, so as we do up and up in Tennessee or in Texas and in, in Florida, so part of our give back is a commitment to each one of those states. So if 8% of our sales is in Tennessee, then 8% of our give back goes back to Tennessee. So as we expand geographically, uh, our impact is going to also be geographically uh, dispersed. So even though right now the majority of our sales are in California and that's where the majority of our, our give back goes, you know, um, we're, we're going to support state by state. That's that's a commitment for us, for sure. Well, I think that's some um, competitiveness there and Tennesseans love a good competition. So I think they'll drink up for that as well. So that's cool there. Um, talk about some of your to talk more about your product line. I think what's really cool too is when you think about the quality, you think about um, everything that you stand for and giving back that 5%. I was shocked at the competitive pricing as well. Like it's very affordable to enjoy a high quality, ready to pour cocktail. That's my uh, one of my personal um, problems is being able to understand what goes all what all goes into it. So being able to just open it and pour, hands down, the easiest thing to do, of course. And then knowing that it is of high quality, check that box as well. But also at a dare I say affordable price point for the quality that you're offering. Talk a little bit about how you're able to do that and all your entire market line. Marcin, you want to go over quickly the product line? Because I don't think we've actually told everyone what uh, what we carry. Yeah, no. And, and I think just to add, I'm going to mention, you can find our cocktails at missioncocktails.com. Or if you have Instagram, please give us a follow on our journey, Mission Cocktails. We made a special promotion for your listening listeners and the ability for us to be on the show, which is City 25, which gives you 25% off your entire purchase. So City 25. So we we really came out, I think, learning from a lot of the experts after attending a lot of these beverage um, shows is always, hey, you should start with one skew. You should start with two skews. And me and Amma say, hey, if we're going to do anything, and we both kind of come from very similar, up uh, humble beginnings. So we said, we're going to give it 150%. So if we're going to do this, we need to come up with an actual line of cocktails that we enjoy and that consumers have a lot of choices. So our first launch was, our classic margarita, our cosmopolitan, our Mai Tai, our old fashioned, and our Manhattan. So all of our drinks consist of 25 to 40% ABV. So real cocktails, bar quality, bar strength. We also are huge into innovation. So we just recently, a few weeks ago, just launched our spicy jalapeno pineapple margarita which is absolutely fantastic. And, you know, one of the Olympics of spirit competition, which is the San Francisco International Wine and Spirits Global Competition, our spicy jalapeno pineapple marg won a double gold, um, one out of five that were ranked for best in class at about 6,000 entries globally. And so did our Mai Tai for the second year in a row, which again, we're so humbled that experts in the industry are validating how good our drinks are. Um, so that's our newest drink. And then the one that's going to be coming out in the next month or so is our espresso martini. So one thing that, you know, we always love to share is me and Ame are as, as hands-on as you can possibly get as far as R&D, spending weekends at our <laughs> distillery, taste testing from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., right? Making sure that we really are proud to serve it to our family and friends. And that's been really the, the single line since day one, that if we're not proud and want to serve it to friends and family when they're visiting us or if we bring it to a party, we don't want to be in the business. So it took us way over a year in R&D for a jalapeno mark and espresso martini as well. But we're very excited and proud. Uh, we've been getting a lot of great feedback, even from our small blind taste testing. Yeah. And I think just, uh, Andrew, it, it also answer the, you know, how, how do you do it, right? And how do you hit a fourteen ninety nine price point? Um, I hate to say this on the air and any, any business people will probably cringe when I say it, but truthfully, 
it's almost like we don't care to make a profit, right? And that's, we literally had to take the profit end of things out of the equation and and work the other way and work at what do we want to accomplish with this company? And that's to give back. So, you know, we don't base our give back on fictitious profits, no dis, disingenuous promises of uh, of give back. It's straight, whatever we sell, if we're profitable or not, we give back 5% of it. So that's for one. And once you start thinking from that mentality, um, and then thinking, as Marcin mentioned, we didn't want to serve anything that, you know, to our friends that we weren't proud of. So it takes all those other profitability questions almost out, right? About maximizing profits and, and, and hey, how much water can we add to this? And how much flavor can we add to this? Those aren't, those aren't questions in our, in, our, in our vocabulary, because if you're starting with the premise of we only want to build good product and we only want to, you know, service, uh, be good citizens and give back you got to be able to sell your product at the end of the day. So we really focused on that on that price point and where our competitors were and we tried to be, you know, clearly we're a bit of a premium uh, to that, but we're not by far not the most expensive, but we really worked back from what the consumer uh, marketplace is at and then the product we wanted to put on the shelf and then we worked backwards knowing that, you know, as we grow in volume, right? Our first batch was was 6,000 bottles, right? You, you, there's no profitable business that can run off of 6,000 bottles. So as we got economies of scale, we knew we'd start to catch up to it. So we're, we're finding a lot of that now. So I hate to say it, you know, if we built this business from a spreadsheet up, uh, we either would have really terrible product um, or we wouldn't have a business. So I, I just look at the way we started this and we started it so backwards uh, for all the right reasons. And it's the only reason I truly believe in my heart that we've been able to pull off amazing product with incredible partners um, that believe in our mission along the way um, to get there. So probably not the uh, the business answer you really wanted, but but the one that is truthfully the mission of our company. Well, no, it's truly commendable as well because you are living your name as Mission Craft Cocktails and you're inspiring others as well. So when you think about the advice, what would you give advice wise for aspiring entrepreneurs who want to start a business with a strong social impact component to it? Marcin, you want to take that one? Mm. I've got my own opinion, truth, truthfully. Yeah, I, I could definitely, I'm sure you could add, because it's going to add a lot of value. I think the biggest thing for an aspiring entrepreneur is really finding something that matters to you personally, and that's something that could really make an impact, right? And I, and I think just to kind of take a step back on our thought process, even with me and Ahmed thinking about the business and mission cocktails is in the origin story, we said, you know, there's so many important causes that we love and we care about that we've been blessed enough to write checks or donate time. So let's do 1% for, you know, health and wellness, 1% for environment, 1% for veterans, 1% for food banks, 1% for animal welfare. And then we really like took a step back and say, okay, well, it's so hard to choose the agencies you're going to partner with. Many of them don't even want to be associated with an alcoholic brand, which is the truth. Um, secondly, is when we look at even us getting to scale and becoming a real brand and having a lot of volume and revenue, how much is 1% going to impact those organizations? So, so that, that's kind of going back to finding something that is really meaningful to you and that could be really affected in the world. And we looked at food insecurity, right? And, and the one thing that we loved when we were exploring a lot of these organizations and diving in deeper and meeting with leadership teams it was kind of eye-opening to me and Ahmed on, you know, how the food banks operate as a business, the efficiency, their economy to scale to purchase food at prices we will never be able to. And then knowing it's not just the homelessness. So when people hear we provided meals to families in need, that that's the wrong term. And, and it's been really touching because a lot of it, you know, is in Orange County and everyone thinks Orange County is Newport Beach and Laguna Beach and just wealth. But there's a lot of millions of people that are suffering without food, right? Um, and it's a lot of working family. It's a single mom that has four kids and a six-figure job, and she just can't afford the rent that's in Southern California and the food. Um, so we really seen that as, okay, not only can we make such a big impact, 
but we can quantify what our actual cash donation is because the food banks will tell you based on you depositing a dollar, this is how many meals we can provide, right? Which is incredible. And for us, I think being able to share that and, and have consumers relate, it's not just the number that we just throw out there, 5%, it sounds great. We're making a real impact. And, you know, even though so that we write some bigger checks than some massive companies in Orange County. So we're really proud of it. And I think that's the advice that I would give because if it wasn't for the purpose of our give back, me and Amit will probably close the business five times already due to the challenges, roadblocks that we face, but knowing what we're doing, what we're gonna do and our mission, it, it's like, okay, what's next? What problem or fire could happen? Because now we're excited to solve it. Uh, my, my answer is exactly the same. I was just gonna say, passion. All you gotta do is find a product for us as cocktails and a purpose uh, for us, which is obviously a food insecurity. And then that's it. Then if you've got that, then you, you're going to have the grit, grind and hustle you need every day to get up. And and when doors get slammed in your face, it doesn't even matter anymore. If it was your regular job or, you know, if it was just something you weren't passionate about, all those all those roadblocks become insurmountable. If you've got purpose and passion, all those roadblocks are just that. They're just roadblocks that you learn to get around. Hey man, what good answers. Yes, I love this. I love how it relates to any industry that you are in and and empowering others to say, look at their business model and say, are you are you giving even 1%? Are you giving 5%? Are you able to confidently say that you are making a social impact with the work and the products that you have? So kudos there. Um, Marcin, Ahmet, where can people go to pour it forward and learn more, uh, purchase your craft cocktails and have some fun? Yeah, missioncocktails.com. So again, missioncocktails.com or you can find us on Instagram, Mission Cocktails, and there's a link that'll take you right to our shop. So you can buy individual bottles or if you have a birthday coming up or a party you wanna go to, we sell beautiful three pack and five pack gift boxes that are again, kind of what we create is high quality premium products. So beautiful magnetic box, great opening experience. Um, and it gets shipped right to your door. And for all your listeners, we've got uh, city 25, uh, plug that in the, uh, the promo code and it's 25% off that, uh, that order. Awesome. Well, lastly, what puts a smile on both of your faces when you look at not only being able to craft this idea into an incredible business that gives back, but also being able to work as friends and know that you're making a difference? Well, I'll you're here for both of us. Um, for sure, being best friends before and then seeing the passion and what we've been able to do in such a short time, our families and specifically our wives, seeing it, believing it and departing of the journey. And I know for me, I have a three-year-old and a one-year-old. Once they grow up, the smile was like that. We've created something that your dad and mom, you know, love to do and, and contribute to the world and having fun doing it and building a real business out of it that, you know, it can be passed on or even just inspirational. Yeah, I don't know. That's I think me and Marson probably why we're best friends and, and business partners is because we we share the same philosophies on life. So my my great joys are when I log on to our website and I see our meal counter growing, puts a smile on my face, uh, knowing that I'm doing it with my best friend. Um, and we've gone through you know crucibles of fire every day, so our our friendship's gotten stronger. Uh, it hasn't broken down. It's gone the exact opposite way. Um, and the legacy, um, you know, that uh, that I will leave uh, my daughter and, and our family and, and Marson's kids uh, is, is uh, an absolute point of pride for me. So, and, and I think just one one thing again, the smile is Ahmed's daughter is much older than my uh, one year old daughter. Um, she's twenty one, but we did an amazing uh, cause with the Steve Irwin Gala, right, and having her cocktails part of the uh, cocktail um, party. And just his daughter just being so proud and sharing the story to just random individuals like, you know, they're, they're getting the cocktails poured, her coming up. How do you like the cocktail? This is the story, even when me and Ahmed are somewhere else. And, and to me, I'm like, wow. And then there's our wives, same thing, uh, which are a little bit more on the introverts that are just so excited about what we're doing. 
And without that, it wouldn't be possible what, we, what we've already accomplished. Yep. Well, you two are truly doing incredible work and I love that you found a passion that you love and made purpose out of it. And hey, it's uh, great to drink as well. So thank you for sharing your inspiring journey behind Mission Cocktails, especially discussing the importance of using, you know, the locally sourced Californian ingredients and maintaining high standards, but also your commitment to philanthropy. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thanks so much for having us, Andrew.